Welcome to your overview video for chapter 25, Radical Modernism. Your learning objectives for this chapter are number one, to summarize the careers and describe the music of Arnold Schoenberg, Alban Berg, Anton Webern, Igor Stravinsky, Bella Bartok, and Charles Ives. And number two, to describe the connections between modernism and the classical tradition in representative works by these composers. Modern composers in the classical tradition faced a common challenge of writing new works deemed worthy of performance alongside classics. Beginning shortly before World War I, modernists broke radically from the music language of the past while maintaining strong links to tradition. The most general term for music in this era is post-tonal, which embraces all the new ways composers found to organize pitch from atonality to neotonality. The new possibilities of post-tonal idioms were part of the marvelous diversity of 20th century music in the classical tradition, as were the individual approaches to tonality. Schoenberg was born in Vienna, where he received minimal instruction in theory and composition. After moving to Berlin, where he worked at a cabaret and taught composition, he returned to Vienna and took on Berg and Webern as students. Here he became acquainted with expressionist painters. Schoenberg formulated the 12 tone method in the 1920s. After the Nazis came to power, he immigrated to the United States where he taught at UCLA. Schoenberg was one of the most influential composers of the 20th century. After his first works written in the late romantic style, Schoenberg turned toward chamber music. He began to apply the method of developing variation and avoided repeating material, the principle of non-repetition. Schoenberg's experimentation in novel harmonic progressions led him to what he called the emancipation of dissonance, since dissonances were freed of the need to resolve to consonants, and in 1908 he began to compose pieces that others called atonal. For organization, Schoenberg relied on developing variation, the integration of harmony and melody and chromatic saturation, as well as gestures from tonal music. Schoenberg's one character opera, Erwartung from 1909, exemplifies expressionism, which portrays tortured emotions through dissonances and exaggerated gestures and pushes non-repetition to an extreme. In the early 20th century, some German and Austrian painters embraced expressionism, which developed from the subjectivity of romanticism. Expressionist painters aspired to represent the inner experience. Schoenberg and Berg, two leading exponents of expressionism in music, deployed angular melodies, fragmented rhythms, and discordant harmonies to convey extreme and irrational states of mind. After Erwartung, Schoenberg turned back to motives, themes, and long-range repetition, evoking traditional forms and the function of tonality in new ways. Piero Lunaire, Moonstruck, Pior, from 1912, a song cycle for a woman's voice and chamber ensemble has expressionist features, such as Sprechstimme, while using many traditional elements. Schoenberg developed the 12-tone method to lend formal coherence to atonal music without text. The basis of 12-tone composition is a row or series that can be used in its prime or original form and in inversion or mirror image, retrograde or backward, and retrograde inversion. The row may appear in any of the 12 possible transpositions of the four forms. This technique combined developing variation with the systematic use of sets and chromatic saturation. In his 12-tone compositions, Schoenberg presented and developed motives and themes using tonal forms and genres of classic and romantic music, but 12-tone rows stand in for the keys. The piano suite illustrates some of these methods, such as the division of the row into segments. The problems Schoenberg addressed as a modernist and the way he faced them did much to shape musical practice in the 20th century. Schoenberg and his students Berg and Webern are known as the Second Viennese School. Alban Berg, 1885 to 1935, 
adopted Schoenberg's atonal and 12-tone methods, but achieved greater popular success by infusing his music with familiar forms, expressive gestures, and characteristic styles of tonal music. Vasek, premiered in 1925, is an expressionist opera in three acts of continuous music in which each scene is linked by orchestral interludes. Berg highlights the drama and organizes the music through the use of light motifs identified with the main characters and traditional forms. In his 12-tone works, Berg often chose rows that allowed for tonal sounding chords and chord progressions. Berg designed the row of the violin concerto from 1935 with four interlocking minor and major triads, which gives this 12-tone work a familiar sound. Anton Webern, 1883 to 1945, was trained as a musicologist and absorbed ideas about music history that influenced his development as a composer. He believed that 12-tone music was the inevitable result of music's evolution throughout history. Webern also passed through the stages of late romantic chromaticism, atonality, and 12-tone organization. He sought to write deeply expressive music, yet his music is extremely concentrated. His works are usually brief, spare in texture, often canonic, and without tonal references. The first movement of Webern's Symphony, Opus 21, illustrates Webern's use of 12-tone procedures, canons, instrumentation, form, and Klegfarben melody. In this movement, he integrates 12-tone concepts with classical formal principles and procedures from Renaissance polyphony. Webern has never gained wide popularity, but his reputation and his influence grew steadily after World War II. Igor Stravinsky, 1882-1971, was raised in St. Petersburg and studied composition privately with Rimsky-Korsakov. In 1910, Sergei Diaghilev commissioned him to write the first of three ballets for the Ballets Russes, which made Stravinsky famous. The Firebird from 1910 stems from Russian nationalism and from Rimsky-Korsakov's exoticism. Some of Stravinsky's distinctive stylistic traits emerge in Petrushka, 1910-1911, including repetitive melodies and rhythms over static harmony, blocks of sound that interrupt and alternate with each other without transitions, and sharp dissonances that are often octatonic or derived from superimposed triads. Stravinsky evokes a carnival atmosphere by borrowing and elaborating Russian folk tunes and Viennese waltzes. Stravinsky's distinctive style crystallized in the Rite of Spring, 1911 through 1913. In this work, Stravinsky borrowed folk melodies, placing them in a primitivist context that helped cause a riot at the premiere. He reduced meter to pulse through unpredictable accents and silences and rapidly changing meters. Ostinatos helped to create static blocks of sound, which he juxtaposed. He frequently layered two or more independent strands of music on top of each other. Stravinsky plays off the obvious surface discontinuities of his music with subtle connections between blocks of sound. Most of the dissonance is based on scales from Russian classical music, including diatonic and octatonic. Stravinsky often identified a musical idea with a particular timbre or used changes of timbre to provide variety. He provided dry rather than lush or resonant timbres. Having developed these techniques and stylistic trademarks, Stravinsky turned towards small combinations of instruments to accompany stage works. After World War I, Stravinsky composed in the neoclassical idiom that would characterize his music for 30 years. In his ballet, Pulcinella, from 1919, Stravinsky applied his methods to arrangements of 18th century pieces by Pergolesi and others. This marked his turn to neoclassicism, a broad movement from 1910 to the 1950s in which composers revived, imitated, or evoked the styles, genres, and forms of pre-romantic music. Neoclassicism allowed Stravinsky to use the tools he had developed in his Russian period while claiming a place in the classical tradition of the West. His neoclassical music adopted an anti-romantic tone 
reflecting a preference for balance, objectivity, and absolute music. In these works, Stravinsky borrowed or alluded to a wide range of composers, styles, forms, and genres, transforming his own signature style in fresh ways. Octet for wind instruments alludes to 18th century styles, yet is quintessentially Stravinsky. After the outbreak of World War II, Stravinsky moved to the United States, settling in Hollywood. From 1953 on, Stravinsky adopted techniques from serial music, an extension on 12-tone methods, to his characteristic idiom. His particular genius lay in assimilating new ideas into his own personal sound. Through Stravinsky, elements that had been nurtured in Russian music and traits that he had introduced became commonplace of modern music. Bella Bartok, 1881 to 1945, studied piano and composition in Budapest. A virtuoso pianist, he performed all over Europe and edited keyboard music by Bach, Haydn, Mozart, and others. As an ethnomusicologist, he collected, edited, and published and wrote about folk music. He composed his most famous pieces shortly before World War II. In 1940, Bartok immigrated to the United States, settling in New York. Bartok created an individual modernist idiom by synthesizing elements of Hungarian, Romanian, and Bulgarian peasant music with elements of the classical tradition. His search for an innately Hungarian music led him to collect and study peasant music, often with fellow composer Zoltan Kodai, 1882 to 1967. He arranged peasant tunes, created original works based on them, and blended peasant tune characteristics with those of classical and modern music. Bartok drew on the classical tradition from Bach to Brahms for his early compositions and then absorbed influences from Strauss, Debussy, Schoenberg, and Stravinsky. Bartok's Microcosmos from 1926 to 1937 is a series of graded piano pieces that summarizes his style, which includes works that push the limits of dissonance, as well as those that are more accessible to a broad audience. Bartok synthesized peasant music with classical music by emphasizing what the traditions have in common, a pitch center, diatonic scales, and motives that are repeated and varied, and what is most distinctive about each, the classical traditions forms and counterpoint, and the irregular meters, modal scales, melody types, ornamentation, and other traits of specific peasant traditions. Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta, 1936, exemplifies Bartok's synthesis and personal style. His approach to neo-tonality is novel, yet alludes both to the chordal motions and tonic dominant polarities of classical music and to the ways peasant melodies established a tonal center. In his melodies, Bartok often varies small motives that are typical both in classical music and in peasant music. And he sometimes mixes modes as can be found in some Hungarian songs. Forms and contrapuntal procedures used by Bartok, such as fugue, sonata, rondo, canon, inversion, and cyclic form come from the classical tradition. Peasant elements also include Bulgarian dance meters, the ornamental style of Serbo-Croatian song, and melodies over drones. Charles Ives, 1874 to 1954, began his musical training as a child and then studied music theory and composition at Yale with Horatio Parker. He was a church organist as a teenager, when his music failed to attract positive reviews, he focused on his insurance business. He still composed in the evenings and on weekends, but published nothing until the 1920s. By the time of his death, most of his major works had been performed and published. Ives is now widely regarded as the first to create a distinctly American body of art music. Ives composed in four distinct traditions, American vernacular music, Protestant church music, European classical music, and experimental music. And in his mature music, combined elements of all four to convey rich musical meanings. 
He grew up surrounded by American vernacular music, and he composed many pieces in the style of the day. As a child and a professional church organist, Ives sang, heard, and played all styles prominent in American Protestant churches. He was well-versed in European classical music, which he played and studied. In his experimental music, Ives preserved most of the traditional rules, but changed other rules in order to see what would happen. He had pieces that were polytonal in two or more keys, and others that explored new ways to construct chords, layer multiple rhythms, or establish a tonal center. His experimental pieces were private studies and were not published or performed for decades, except for one, The Unanswered Question from 1908, which later became well known. From 1902 on, Ives wrote only in classical genres, but he brought into his music the styles and sounds of the other traditions he knew. In some of his works, such as the Third Symphony, Ives used cumulative form, which follows the procedures of thematic fragmentation and development of European sonata form, but reverses the normal course of events so that the themes are developed before they appear in full near the end. Many of Ives's later pieces, such as Three Places in New England, are programmatic, celebrating aspects of American life and using American tunes and styles to convey meanings. Some pieces layer multiple borrowed tunes in a musical collage to suggest the process of remembering. He frequently mixed styles within a single piece to evoke a wide range of extra musical reference and also to articulate the musical form. All four of these musical traditions can be observed in his song, General William Booth Enters Into Heaven from 1914. Although Ives had little influence on others until after World War II, his work has had a tremendous impact on younger generations of American musicians. For your 25-point quiz, I would know about Schoenberg. Know all about his compositional style, his use of harmony and melody. Know what Sprechstimme is. Know about expressionism in art. And what the painters did. Know about 12-tone compositions and the process used. Know about Schoenberg's students. Know about Berg and his relationship with Mahler. Know about Berg's opera, Vasek. Know about Webern's belief of the 12-tone system. Know what Klangfarben melody is. Know about Stravinsky and his ballets. Know about his opera. Know about Bartok and how he used folk music. Know about Bartok's music for strings, percussion, and celesta. Know about Charles Ives. Know about cumulative form. Know about Stravinsky's Petrushka. Know about Ives's General William Booth enters into heaven. And that ought to do it. Good luck.